Well, good morning, church, and happy Easter to you. What a great day it is to be called the church, and it's all because of the resurrection. So if you've joined us because uh, you stumbled onto us or a friend has invited you, however you got here, it's so good that you're with us this morning, and it's a great day to be together. You know, as I was reflecting and thinking about uh, the early followers of Jesus, that they would have just come through three days of grief, despair, questions, and uh, hiding out in, in the upper room just in fear and wondering what the future is going to look like, uncertain and filled with questions. So you can imagine how shocked they were when the women brought back a story from their visit at the tomb. Matthew records it like this. He says, after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. There you will see him. Wow. The resurrection was never intended to be a secret, friends. Jesus wanted to show himself to his friends and to let them know that he had risen. He wanted to reassure them and to comfort them and to give them a hope for the future. And he wants to show himself to each of us today. He wants to be with us today. He wants to show himself to us and he wants to comfort us with the joy of the resurrection and his presence with us here today. So friends, Let's declare this Easter blessing on each other. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. If you haven't already been on the chat, maybe now is a great time to just slip over there and uh, just share this Easter greeting that Christ is risen with each other. That would be awesome. And you can also do that on our Discord uh, later in the service or after the service. Uh, just go on out and just hang out with some friends and share this Easter blessing with each other. That would be so awesome. Well, what a great way for us to uh, just be led into worship Let's pause for a moment and just take a deep breath in and let the reality of Easter really resonate deep within our hearts. Just take a deep breath in. Let's breathe in this reality that Jesus is for you, that Jesus wants to show himself to you, and that Jesus wants to comfort you and give you confidence for the future. Just breathe that all in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for including us in the resurrection. Help us to engage more fully, knowing that you are for us as we enter in our time of musical worship. Would you fill us with a sense of joyful, anticipation. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen.
see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise in the wonder of your grace. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise. to let it all go oh I see
Well, friends, I hope that you really enjoyed that worship. I was just struck as I'm sitting here and just participating, just thinking of all of you watching and in so many different circumstances of life, whether it be um, difficult relationships, could be times of joy, could be that you're at home uh, in pain, struggling in one way or another. And I've just been overcome a little bit with uh, God's love for you that he has paid your ransom, that he has put it all on the line for you. And I just hope that you've been able to just receive some of that through this time of worship. And if you haven't already, now is a good time to just open up your hands to heaven on this resurrection day and those things that may have seemed dead to you and dead for so long that you can't imagine things being any different. I want to encourage you to just open your hands to heaven and know that God can pour out something new and something fresh and bring life where you never thought possible. Friends, please know how much he loves you, how much he loves you. That's what this Sunday is all about. That's what we're remembering. Oh, a couple of the beautiful things that I love about the resurrection is that it brings down walls and it makes the way for peace for all of us, peace in our relationships. And as a church, we really lean heavily into that. We want to be and uh, are working all the time to be a peacemaking church. And uh, so we have um, sometimes, as much as we believe in peacemaking, sometimes 
the practicality of it can be difficult, right? Challenging to, to enact all those principles. And so we're offering a peacemaking course that we'd love to invite you to uh, participate in um, and just to learn and how to exercise the muscles of our peacemaking muscles, so to speak. And maybe they're in, bit of a, in need of a bit of a stretch or a few reps. If you want to register for that course, uh, just send an email to peacefulpractices at themeetinghouse.com to register, and um, someone will get back to you. Either you might uh, be put on a waiting list, and if, if that is the case, then know that you will still have access to the course materials and someone will be getting back to you with all of that information. We're excited to be offering this course and uh, I'm looking forward to myself taking it at some point. So um, check it out, send that email in and get yourselves registered. Well, as part of, of us following Jesus, as being Jesus followers, we not only lean in heavily to peacemaking, but we also foster a culture of generosity. That is such a thing of God, to be generous. That is the whole message of the gospel. God so loved that he gave. And so we foster a, a culture here as well of generosity and giving. And we're excited that uh, you're partnering with us to just see God's kingdom come, to bring hope, this resurrection hope that we've been speaking about and that we'll hear stories about in a little bit as well, to bring that hope to those around us and even way beyond our own walls. And so all our giving, don't forget, can be done at themeetinghouse.com slash give. Well, it's time for us to move into our teaching time, and we'll be wrapping up our Leviticus series. I trust that you guys have really appreciated that series. I've been hearing so many incredible comments and uh, learnings that people have had that they never expected they would throughout this Leviticus series. Uh, things have just really come alive and really helping them to even understand a little bit more of the New Testament and the nature, the true nature of God. So that's been really, really exciting. So today we're wrapping that up, uh, but we're also going to take a few minutes to sit in the resurrection message and the resurrection story and this beauty of Easter Sunday. And so we're going to be hearing from a few other voices within our community as we sit in that space together. So let's head over to our teaching and then we'll be right back after that. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 to 22. If you're reading this, congratulations, you're alive. If that's not something to smile about, then I don't know what is. Chad Sugg. He, the life of all, our Lord and Savior, did not arrange the manner of his own death, lest he should seem to be afraid of some other kind. No, he accepted and bore upon the cross a death inflicted by others, and those other, his special enemies, a death to which them was supremely terrible and by no means to be faced. And he did this in order that, by destroying even this death, he might himself be believed to be the life and the power of death be recognized as finally annulled. Saint Athanasius. Hope is subversive precisely because it dares to admit that all is not as it should be. Sarah Bessie. Never lose hope. Never lose faith. Layla Gifty Akita. 
For me, the most radical demand of Christian faith lies in summoning the courage to say yes to the present risenness of Jesus Christ. Brennan Manning. Jesus is the hope of the world, and the local church is the vehicle of expressing that hope to the world. Andy Stanley. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus. John, chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Well, a few thousand years ago, we commemorate and we remember the weekend that everything changed twice. Everything changed twice. Two days ago, we remembered the story, the commemoration, and the deep grief and sadness that we all experienced as the body of Christ representing those first disciples who felt that all had been lost. Everything had turned and changed because of the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the Messiah, the failed Messiah, they thought. Everything had fallen down and crumbled and broken that death had won over life, that hate had triumphed over love, and that fear had won over hope. And two days later, we are gathered here today to remember that one thing rose triumphant. Jesus was raised from the dead, and we got our marching orders. And it was one thing, one thing that fueled this movement. And it's a simple word. You've been hearing it over and over again. Hope. Hope. In Jesus, hope in our faith has been renewed. In the resurrection of Christ, we know that death is not the end, that sin is, is eliminated, that we are forgiven and loved by God, and that in Jesus we know and are confirmed what God looks like. And so, brothers and sisters, happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. And so we are fueled by hope, not doubt, not fear, not hate, not animosity, not religion, not politics, not money, not wealth, not the accumulation of stuff. Our mission and value is found in Jesus, and our fuel is hope. Are you ready to hear some hopeful stories this morning? Are you ready to hear some hopeful stories this morning? Yes, yes, amen, it's why we're here. It's why billions of people around the world for thousands of years have chosen this day to say, we put down our weapons, we put down our doubt, we put down our fear, we lay to death, death, and we embrace love and hope and faith and the body of Christ and what it represents because Jesus is alive now. Why do we follow Jesus? Why? It's, it's, I've been so captured uh, leading up to Easter Sunday and study, studying alongside these two gems um, of like what the earliest followers of Jesus did uh, when they first learned of his death. If you remember, they, they fled. In particular, the only brave ones were the women who were like, well, we still have to do stuff. We're staying here and do, doing the work where the men all went and hid in the upper room, just self-protected, overcome by fear. And then two days later, they are overcome with hope to the point where the only thing that they are fueled by, in fact, here's what they did not do. The earliest disciples were, were anticipating a Messiah. Now, the Messiah is, if you were um, participating in our Leviticus series, it's the anointed one, the one who has been set apart to, to show what God looks like, to be a mirror of God to the world, to bless it and not to curse it. But it's also, it had evolved into this like political ideology that the Messiah will put the nation of Israel, God's people, uh, up back onto the throne of power. The disciples expected that Jesus as Messiah would storm into Jerusalem and then into Rome, overthrow everything, kill the Romans, and put Israel back on her rightful place at the, at the top of the pack. And then Jesus dies. It's all over. It's just another failed Messiah. And then Sunday 
comes and they realize the enormity of what the Messiah actually look like, looks like, what the divinity, divinity of Christ actually means, what God living in them by the Spirit actually will have them do. And do you know what they do with this newfound knowledge? They are no longer afraid. They, they wrestle with their own doubts, but they go and they tell the story of hope. That's it. For the first few hundred years, in fact, that's the hallmark of Christian faith. Go and tell. It's the last thing in each of the Synoptic Gospels that Jesus instructs. Matthew's Gospel, go and tell. Go and tell. Uh, Mark's Gospel, go and share. Go and make. And then Luke's Gospel, go and, and like reproduce. Tell this, or, uh, uh, orient people towards this again. Make disciples. Go and show them how to do it. And so if you are here and you're a brand new Christian or if you're investigating faith, welcome to the story of hope. Welcome to the story of hope. It's why we're here. It's why we move out. And it's why there's something for each of us to do. The earliest call of these disciples was not to be like, okay, let's get our philosophy and theology right. It's like, this is crazy. This is crazy. This dead dude, our Messiah, is resurrected. Are you telling me that, like, death is no longer the end? That there's new life and hope and vitality? Here's what we have to do. We just have to tell everybody. We have to tell everybody. We have to tell everybody. Brothers and sisters, we have to tell everybody. We have to tell everybody. We have to tell everybody. Now, I follow Jesus because I know that Jesus is what God looks like. And God looks like love. And I celebrate the resurrection because the resurrection gives me hope that death is not the finish line. That death is not the end. That Jesus has victory over death. And in every way, here and there, eternal life is like here for our experience, and hope is our fuel. Are you ready for some more hope stories? Are you ready? Good morning. I choose to continue to follow Jesus in my life because I have known him to be a faithful and constant presence, a faithful and constant friend throughout all of the different seasons of my life. Whether it has been seasons that are hard and heavy or it has been seasons that are full of joy and celebration, I have been aware by God's grace that Jesus is with me in the middle of whatever that season holds. And as I have grown to know more about who Jesus is through the course of my life, there is just more and more to him. The more that I know about him, the more that I love him, the more interested I am in following him and shaping my life to look like him. And also the more that I know him, I have found the more that I know myself. As I move closer to Jesus, as I follow in his way, I become more and more the truest version of who I was created to be. And that is the kind of life that I want to live. I follow Jesus because I love him with my whole self. He is my everything. And I want my life to reflect his love and his heart to the world around me. And the resurrection gives me hope because it means I don't have to be afraid. In any of the places in my life or in the world where it looks like death is winning, where it looks like dark, the darkness is too much, where it looks like things are not going to end well, when I remember the resurrection, I remember that that is not the case and that death does not win that because of Jesus, because of the resurrection, life wins, light wins, love wins. And so in the places where I am feeling overwhelmed, where I am feeling afraid, where I am in the thick of the middle in hard ways, I can plant my feet in the truth of the resurrection and remember that the God who is victorious over death is the God who is with me the God who loves me, the God who is for us, and that this can inform the way that we live our lives. This can be the truth and the hope that we have to share with the people that are around us. I'll let that sit for a minute. <laughs> oh, yes, Laura, and yeah. in, 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 amen. Uh, I follow Jesus because he uh, continues to answer my questions. And I think the, the first question before I really knew anything about him was, what is true? Um, that's my starting point in, in, on my journey. What is true? Uh, if it's 
Buddha, if it's Muhammad, if it's like name it, if it's space aliens up there, if that's real and true, then that's, that's the direction that I'm going, right? I just want it to be true. And in that journey, um, get introduced to this guy. I kept coming back to this person named Jesus who holds um, a crazy standard of his integrity and his, his moral standing. And what he teaches is just like it's so far above anybody else. And the further, the further you go down any of these rabbit holes, you find that there's contradictions or there's like, okay, so this doesn't make sense the further you go. But with Jesus, I find that, oh, it actually makes more sense. It's actually more true. And as that question um, was answered and became more clear to me, what is true? It's like, okay, I think Jesus is like, there's something about this guy. And then as you continue down even further, you realize, oh, he's not just true, but he's real and he's good. Like at the, at the foundation and the core, there's a goodness. And, I, and as good and, and, uh, and high a standard as he is, you realize, okay, so now how can I be good enough to even be, like stand in the same space or, but you realize part of his nature is, no, 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 it doesn't, like, it doesn't matter where you're at, um, but I'm welcoming you as you are to be close to me. It's like, oh man, like that's, it just gets, <laughs> exponentially better uh, as the, as you uh, you get to know him a little bit better. So I follow Jesus because he's true, uh, because he's real, because he is good, and um, desires to be close to me. I don't know why that is, and and uh, but I but I accept the invitation. Um, uh, even when I forget, I try and accept the, accept the invitation. And why the, the resurrection gives me hope is because, similar to what you said, Laura, it's just it eliminates all fear. Um, what, what is, the, if, if Jesus has conquered death, then what do we have to be afraid of? I have a, a, a good pastor friend, and I'll talk to him, and sometimes I'll just kind of be sharing my problems. Many of my problems are first world problems, and you relate. And I'll go, and I'll just talk, and I'll, oh, yeah, woe is me, and I'm complaining, and I'll... And, and my lovely pastor friend will gently and pastorally say, uh, Quincy, is it bigger than death? <laughs> well, no, not really. <laughs> it's not. And it's just, it, it gives a kind of confidence. It says, no, 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 like Jesus, if this is true, if, this, if he is good and he is who he says he is, then there's no fear. So uh, that's why... Uh, I have hope in the resurrection. This is why I follow Jesus. And, and it's part of the story. And one of the things that encourages me on a level, that's just why I, why I continue to, to find encouragement in, uh, in even serving in ministry is to be able to hear stories of transformation and change. So we're going to get to do that this morning and hear, uh, hear a few uh, people from our community. And locally, you'll have an opportunity to hear... Uh, in your own locations or your own sites if you're watching online. But to hear that transformation that happens as we come closer into what is, what is good, what is true, um, what is real. But let me pray um, as we make that transition to hear more, uh, whether here in Oakville or locally. Yeah, Father, we, uh, we thank you for these opportunities to be reminded of who you are. As Jimmy said, it's like, okay, we, we need to go and tell. We need to go and tell. We need to go and tell. Part of our responsibility is to just tell the story. It's not about having all of the right answers or knowing how it's all going to end. But telling your story and how it's not just transformed us, but it continues to transform us. As Laura shared, that makes us into the people that we've been created to be. Even better, even more. So, Father, we, um, we invite you here as people here maybe um, need that reminder or even be encouraged to look back in their own lives and see the, the way that you've touched and your fingerprints on their lives and their life story. Let this morning be an opportunity to be reminded of who you are 
and who we get to be as we participate in a relationship, a real relationship with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm from the Brampton site. Um, and why I follow Jesus, um, I, Jesus is the source of perfect peace in my life. Um, I follow Jesus because I love him and because he reveals the heart of God to me. Um, I also find that uh, through the power of his spirit, I have access to the wisdom, the love, and the grace that I need to be the wife that he has called me to be to my husband, Brian, and mother to my son, Caleb. Um, why does the resurrection give me hope? Um, the resurrection, resurrection gives me hope because this Jesus that I love and follow has overcome death itself, and he is alive. Um, and I also find that when the heaviness and the brokenness of our world weighs me down, um, that he is continually reminding me the that I have access to the resurrection power um, to, you know, look into the areas of my own life where death and disappointment has crept in. So this is why the resurrection gives me so much hope. Hi, I'm Ken Bell. I'm from the, also from the Brampton site, um, but I also play here uh, regularly in Oakville. Um, why do I follow Jesus? Uh, when I deep, uh, dig deep into the scripture, when I look closely at the ways that Jesus um, related to people, related to his disciples, and I see their um, compelling love, compelling grace, compelling mercy. And compelling is the word that um, stands out to me when I think about how Jesus related to the world around him. He's compelling. Um, the other word that stands out to me is irresistible. Um, once uh, I've experienced this kind of forgiveness and love, I find that that love is irresistible. You just cannot resist it. Uh, and uh, in terms of the hope of the resurrection, for me, when I look back at my life, I look at the um, really colossal failures that I've had and the, the things that I've um, really um, done poorly, uh, people that I've failed, I think about the forgiveness that God has for me. I think about the fact that he conquered the grave, um, conquered death. Um, it's unbelievable, and it's irresistible. That's why I follow Jesus. Hi, everybody. My name is Valentina, and here we go. <laughs> I don't know why they chose me to share this. I, I told Laura. I told you. I know. I told her I'm gonna cry. And that's why I have this. I'm prepared. And We've been asked to share with you guys why we follow Jesus and what is the hope of the resurrection is for us. And the only thing I've tried to write down, beautiful words about the resurrection. And thank God we have these beautiful pastors with us that can do a better job to explain it to you what that looks like. But for me, I can tell you that in my own personal journey with God, I am experiencing the resurrection right in this season, every single day. Every single day, God is showing me how he can lift me up from those places of darkness and death and despair that I've been going through. You know, I, I feel like I, I've, tried, I've tried myself. I've, I've tried to fix myself and... Uh, I, you know, like uh, I went to this place of uh, deep pain and I've tried to use uh, 
very bad coping mechanism. Like some of you may be relating with that, like uh, it's been alcohol and it's been drugs and it, it's been relationships and there's been all of these things that I've tried to do. But at the end, that pain was always there and it never went away. I moved to three countries. I, as you can hear probably, this is not my first language, English. Um, I've tried to start my life uh, over and over again, but those things were always falling in me. And now I'm 40 something and uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm around there. Um, and God is like, just stop running. Just stop running. I'm here and I wanna help you. I wanna heal you. And, and I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm done running. So the hope of the resurrection that Jesus like is showing me now is something that yes, it did happen 2000 years ago, but it's available to all of us every single day because without him, and this is probably the first question, why do I follow Jesus? It's because without him, I would have no life. I had no hope, no love to share. And I would definitely not be standing here this morning, which would be probably easier, but um, I think that those wounds that we carry, and all of us have those wounds, all of us, I know that. Like this room is full of people, they have an armor and they're bringing masks with them. So we can let them down. We can let God come to us and come into those wounds and those cracks and really help us heal that pain that we've been carrying. So the message I want to share with you today is that hope is available to all of you guys because I'm telling you that it's happening for me. And believe me, when I tell you that I've been in those dark places where there was despair and I even doubt God himself. Like I, I said to my husband, I don't even know if God is real. But he reminded me that those are the places where he actually shows up. And he never, never fails us, honestly. So this is the only message I can share with you guys this morning. That uh, the resurrection, it is available every day for all of you guys. Thank you for listening. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Arthur. Uh, my family and I are part of the online community for the Meeting House. Uh, we also do a lot with the Hamilton region. Uh, we've been a part of the Meeting House family since all the cool kids were doing uh, church online because of the pandemic, and uh, we found our home here. We, however, are nowhere near Hamilton um, or Canada in general. We live in New Bern, North Carolina, and we're contractually obligated to let you know that it's the birthplace of Pepsi. Now, the reason that I follow Jesus, well, Honestly, it started because that's what my family was doing. I came from a family that was in church, you know, every time the door was open. Um, my mom was the pianist uh, and that sort of thing. So we were there at least three times a week. And it was an obligation. It felt transactional. Um, if, you know, God will love me if I do all of these things. Um, not that God really wanted to love me. Uh, but when I actually found out that God and Jesus do love us, that it's not contractual, it's just what love does. And that was something I couldn't look away from and I wanted to be a part of. And so I started to follow to reflect the love that was being shown on me to everyone around me. And Honestly, that's why I have hope in my daily life. You know, we live over 800 miles away from uh, the meeting house. I don't know the kilometers for that, sorry. Uh, but it doesn't matter because if we're reflecting God's love and Jesus's love to all of those around us, a community that's worldwide, you know, different denominations, different faiths, different locations, you know, different cultures, it doesn't matter. It makes it all that much more beautiful and wonderful because we're all reflecting that same light in life. And if we are doing that, then there is so much that can be 
changed for the better, we can reflect that light and that life. Um, and that gives me hope in a world that seems pretty dark sometimes. My name is Debbie Sawchuk. I'm a regular viewer of the Meeting House live stream, and I also attend um, a physical home church with other people from Georgetown, which is where I live. And I've been a follower of Jesus in an ebbing and flowing sort of way for 46 years, almost to the day. The day I made that commitment was towards the end of a dark period of my teen years, when I had been struggling mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And what marked the day was a sudden awareness of the presence of Jesus and of being known, understood, loved, and held by him. It was like a tsunami. But a tsunami moment and its aftermath only lasts so long before it's just a memory. So why do I keep believing? There are certainly historical and philosophical reasons that I find convincing, but probably the main reason I feel compelled to trust Jesus, and, and this is going to sound like a downer, but it isn't really, is his suffering. Jesus is fully God and fully human in the same person. This is a God who came into the world as a human being, not as a sort of disguise and not just for a visit, but all in human for a lifetime. Just being a real human in this broken world necessarily means a certain amount of suffering. We all suffer. And Jesus' life and death included major suffering of different kinds. And having ascended to heaven, he hasn't stopped being a human. He hasn't forgotten. And even now, when those he loves suffer, which is everyone, in fact, the whole creation, he suffers too, which means that God suffers because God and the human are perfectly united in Jesus. And then we realize that even in the Old Testament, God suffered with his people and also because of his people when they kept on turning aside from him. That is all very key for me in continuing to believe because a God who has never suffered is of no help and no inspiration to me and can't understand me. But the suffering of Jesus, of God, gives me hope because he feels my suffering and he gets it, but without being overwhelmed by it. He's been to the other side, has conquered death, and has a resurrected human body. And that is where this Jesus path that I am on leads. Meanwhile, as I walk that path in this life, I'm not alone in the suffering that I experience because he's also living in me by his spirit, who actually, by the way, groans with me and on my behalf to the Father. God groans for us and at the same time is strong enough to receive that groaning and hold it and do something about it. From him I receive strength, from a Lord who has suffered, still suffers with me, and has overcome. In fact, by his own life and death and resurrection, he has guaranteed complete healing and wholeness for me one day in the future. That's why I'm compelled to trust and follow Jesus, and that's how it gives me hope. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Arthur. Uh, my family and I... Yes. It is so wonderful to hear these stories of others and why they follow Jesus. And when I think of my own journey with Jesus, I can't help but remember back to the start of my journey and just the sense of being known, fully known and fully loved. And I think that's at the heart of my following Jesus. That's kind of where it began, where I thought, I, could be, I would be rejected if I was really known, and yet to find that I was fully known and fully loved has continued to be a thread throughout my journey with Jesus. There are times for sure where I uh, blow it and I go hiding off somewhere and I always know his nudging to call me out of darkness, to call me out of hiding, and to welcome and receive me again. And so these are some of the reasons I follow Jesus. And when I think of the resurrection, immediately I think I'm not held by my past. 
The resurrection gives me that hope and that knowledge that I am not held by yesterday, not just the distant past, but even yesterday and the sins I may have committed then or the wrong, whatever it might be, I am not held to that. The resurrection says every day is a new day with Jesus. The resurrection continues to remind me that God is for me and he is for all of us and that there is really and truly a deep sense of hope. As I'm reflecting on this a little bit, I think of that, that scripture that says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, lives in me, lives in you. Wow. To me, that is totally, totally mind boggling. So how about you? We've heard stories from others and it's been so good to hear those, but how about you? What does the resurrection mean to you and why do you follow Jesus? Maybe over this Easter weekend, before the time is all gone, you can take some time just to ask yourself that question and maybe share your thoughts with a friend or your family. And um, if not, maybe there is, maybe this isn't a great opportunity for you to go check out a home church and just hear other stories as to why they follow Jesus. Maybe share your own, or maybe you have questions. Maybe this is a place for you to go and just find out, well, what is it about this Jesus? What is it about this resurrection? What are you really talking about? And this could be a really good and safe place for you to go and um, just be curious in those spaces. So yeah, go check out a home church if at all uh, something that's on your heart. So just a reminder again that um, we do have our Discord open and uh, we would really love for you to go and uh, give that Easter greeting that Christ is risen and share that time with new friends maybe or touch base with old friends during Discord. We also, um, just coming up, as we said earlier that we've just closed off our, um, our Levit Leviticus series today. And uh, coming up, we are starting a new series called Sacrificial Savior. And I think it's going to sort of be picking up where Leviticus left off. So there's going to be a real intertwine there. I think you don't want to miss this. It's going to be sort of like part two in a sense. Anyway, we really look forward to seeing you then and to having that time together. Well, let's close off. But as we do, I'd love to leave us with a benediction. Uh, this is a prayer that uh, Paul uh, gave to the Ephesians, prayed for the Ephesian church. And it's a prayer I would really love to leave with us as we go into our next week. For me, it's kind of a part of a resurrection prayer. So here it is from Ephesians chapter three. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.